Hey. Uh, welcome. So uh, I just tried this before and I had to cancel it uh, because I have some new settings to set here and they are now set officially. Um, so here in this lesson, this interactive lesson, I thought we would see if you have any questions ab about English that you've heard in uh, TV or movie that you've watched recently um, that sort of, um, yeah, that you have questions about that confuses you. Because oftentimes uh, when watching TV or movies, people speak in slang and uh, it's very difficult to figure out what those things mean. Uh, it's very different from what you learn in textbooks. And obviously there's plenty of stuff on the internet for uh, learning actual English grammar. That's not what this is going to be about because plenty has been written. Um, this is going to be about uh, more of that uh, everyday natural stuff, which I uh, really enjoy talking about. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I really love Friends. Um, I grew up watching Friends on TV um, and have rewatched it many times. Um, and I think I, it's fair to say I understand almost everything uh, that they say there uh, that's a joke. Um, but there's a lot of humor in there that um, wouldn't necessarily make sense to someone if it wasn't explained to them if they didn't uh, grow up as an English speaker. Uh, so that's what those videos are about. But of course, those videos take a long time to produce, the ones that I've created. So this is an antidote to that. It's a chance for me to get to answer questions uh, with a little bit more uh, speed and uh, hopefully with some interaction. Uh, in the meantime, I'll keep an eye on what I think is the chat. I think. This is my first time using um, the more advanced YouTube streaming software. Um, but in the meantime, there are a few questions that have been asked on the TV ESL website um, that I didn't have answers for. There are no videos for, but I can see that people have searched for them. Uh, and I thought they were kind of interesting. Um, so the first one that somebody searched for um, was uh, Chandler. Chandler. They just searched for Chandler and Dinah. And amazingly, they spelled Dinah correctly. So I have a feeling maybe they searched somewhere else on the internet first. Um, and that's sweet because they probably already got their answer, um, but they wanted to see a video. <laughs> um, so I believe Chandler says something about uh, being in the kitchen. So because the joke here is that there's a popular song, popular song um, from like a hundred years ago um, that, uh, that everyone just knows. It's just like a part of American culture. Um, and it goes, someone's in the kitchen with Dinah, someone's in the kitchen I know, someone's in the kitchen with Dinah, I think it's strumming on the old banjo, or playing on the old banjo, I don't know. So it's like this uh, classic song of like being in the, the Wild West in the country, uh, countryside of America. So uh, I forget the root of the joke, but it has to do with someone being in the kitchen. So someone's in the kitchen. Um, Chandler's making a joke on that, that someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Uh, and that is all that is. So again, you just have to be a native speaker. How do I and everyone know that song? I don't know. I don't know what it's from. I don't know uh, how it has become so popular in American and Canadian culture, but it is there that everyone uh, sort of knows that song. I have no idea why. I didn't learn it in school. I never saw it on TV. <laughs> it's just... It's just one of those things. It's kind of kooky. It's not fair to a, a, someone trying to learn English, I know. <laughs> because how does that get explained? I don't know. Um, somebody else asked, uh, they asked about guess what, which I do have a video for, which is good. Um, no room for milk. So Joey, uh, I know that one. So um, Rachel brings Joey like a coffee and he says, no room for milk. And then she like sips some, uh, some of the coffee and then says like, there, there's your, there's your room. Um, and this is pretty common still. So that if you come to uh, Canada or uh, the States and you go to a Starbucks, for example, and you order a coffee, um, they may say, uh, uh, they may ask you as one of the set questions, uh, room for milk. Actually, uh, more than that, they'll say room for dairy. Let's turn that up. Room for dairy. Okay, because dairy could be um, milk. 
for cream for skim milk. I guess the idea here is that if you say room for milk, then someone might be someone might say, "Oh, I don't drink milk. I only drink skim milk." Um, or uh, yeah, or like, "No, I don't want milk. I want cream." Right? Cream is much heavier and it and tastes a lot better. So it just saves them a lot of time at Starbucks if they say "room room for dairy," and that just means, "Hey, so do you want me to fill the coffee cup like you know eighty percent?" So like. Which one's brown? Let's find brown. There is no brown. Let's go with that. Yes, we're gonna have room for milk. Room for milk. If there wasn't room for milk, it would go right to the top. So I don't like milk in my coffee. So when, when I go to Starbucks here, they say room for dairy. And I say, no, no, right to the top. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to say right to the top. That's that's just uh, that's just my personal style. Um, yeah. What else do we have? Uh, someone said snap. I have a snap, which I guess is snap and his turtle. No snap and his turtle, which I've talked about too. Someone searched for contest. Just the word contest. And I don't know if they were watching Seinfeld. Seinfeld is a show from the '90s, about the same time as Friends. And there's an episode, I think the name of the episode is The Contest. And they could have been searching for that, but I, I kind of doubt that Seinfeld has, like, is popular now. Friends remains popular, but Seinfeld is a little bit dated if you watch it um, as TV shows go. So that is room for dairy. Let's find out this Kitchen with Diet thing. Chandler Kitchen with Diet. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so Rachel, oh yeah, Rachel's looking for her engagement ring. I know I had it this morning. I know I had it when I was in the kitchen with Right, so in the kitchen with Dinah, it's like a set phrase in English. S stupid though it is. Um, yeah. Dinah's a line from a folk song. I've been working on the railroad. It's from the folk song, I've been working on the railroad. Which again is, I don't know where that gets taught. I don't know where we learn that, where that comes from, but uh, it, it's a thing. It's just, it's just a thing. What else? Wait, are there literally two people watching? <laughs> if you're watching, I, I would I would truly love a question. Um, oh, yay! <laughs> I'll do. Uh, I'm, I'm being uh, I'm being punked. Advice on how to unlearn English. Do not have any such advice. Why do you, why, why would you want to unlearn English? Tell me more. As to, that's some advanced, yeah. Do you have any advice as to how to unlearn English? I mean, presumably move to another country and speak their language um, entirely. A concussion might not hurt either. I mean, it would hurt, but it might not hurt you in your efforts to unlearn English. <laughs> Someone else searched for expenses paid um, on the website. I don't quite understand um, why, why exactly that 
is something that they searched for. So um, if you're watching a game show, like in North America, that could be a prize where you get an, um, an all expenses paid, all expenses paid vacation. Oh, handwriting. All expenses paid vacation. And that's strictly like when you're winning a prize in a, in like a like a game show, which means that they're going to take care of, you know, accommodations, a hotel, uh, as well as food and like uh, transportation to and from the airport. Um, this, this maybe some sort of um, activity like I don't know deep sea diving if it was in the Bahamas or something like that. Like that would be all expenses paid. The idea of an all expenses paid vacation is that you should not have to pay anything in order to experience the vacation. I don't know how that would have come up in like a TV show, all expenses paid, unless it was a situation that they that they were in where they said, hey, all expenses are, it was like we won an exp all expenses paid uh, vacation. The search here was just expenses paid, not all expenses paid. And I think it should, I think there, are, it's always a three word set phrase, all expenses paid. You, you don't say, some expenses paid and you don't say expenses paid um if it was only some expenses paid then it just wouldn't be brought up because that's not as attractive of a feature for a vacation to say hey this is some expenses paid <laughs> um that's going to turn people away for sure <laughs> and in perspective don't know about that one. Oh, like i wasn't dreading tomorrow enough having to give it back to him Meaning, okay, 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 cool. Okay, let's try that one. So someone has searched for, I think this is Chandler has the bracelet that Joey has given him. And someone's saying, you're gonna have to meet Joey tomorrow. And then uh, Chandler says, uh, Let's just erase this. Oh, like it wasn't. Oh, that's a lot for me to write out. Let's just do this, the shortest part of it. So, oh, oh, like I wasn't dreading tomorrow enough. Wow, there's so much to unpack in this. Let's not even worry about the second part of the sentence. Let's stick with the first part there because that's probably where the most um, deconstructing needs to happen. So let's just discount O. You know what O is. It's just a, like a declamation. O. Uh, it doesn't really matter here. It's just emphasizing. Uh, okay. D uh, dreading is uh, that could trip some people up. So dreading is like a very anxious fear. Um, so you would say like I'm dreading. Uh, tomorrow's test or I'm dreading um, uh, having to get up tomorrow morning at four o'clock in the morning like I'm really dreading that so you're looking you're like like you're worried and you're you're feeling anxious about something in the future and it's usually pretty serious although I know getting up at 4 a.m. isn't like life or death but it's you know it's still something that you you have pretty strong feelings about so that's what he's saying he's he is dreading tomorrow and so whoever was just speaking to him, um, what they told him makes him have even more dread, like a high, what they're saying to him makes him feel dread. So let's see. Oh, I think it's Phoebe. Oh, like I wasn't dreading tomorrow enough. Ah, Rachel. Oh, it's Rachel that says it. I'm dreading tomorrow enough, having to give it back to him. Hi, Barry, remember me? Yeah. Okay. I want to find out what Monica says first. There it is. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Starts to look under the couch cushions. 
No, look, don't touch that, says Phoebe. Oh, I forget that. Oh, Michael wasn't dragging the ball. Not having to give it back to him. Ah, oh, okay, 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 right. Okay, so already Rachel was dreading tomorrow. And that was just with her expecting to give the ring back to him. So that was already a level of dread she was feeling. And now there's this new piece of information, this new situation. The new situation is that she's lost the ring. So she was already, like, the dread that she was feeling was already, like, 9 out of 10. And now that she's lost the ring, that's even more to worry about. So the dread is, like, <laughs> like how much higher can it go? I guess it can go from 9 to 10. But she's saying, um, she's sort of underlining, she's, I guess the most basic way to shrink this sentence down is, I was already worried about tomorrow. And now I'm even more worried. Um, this is a common enough thing, uh, yeah, a common enough device to do this like I wasn't. Um, so let's, how can one explain like I? I mean, it's it's sarcasm, and I presume most languages have sarcasm in it. And you're saying there's like a there's like a hidden there are hidden words before the word like. Which I guess are your your acting like <laughs> wait a second perfectionist oh like I'm like I'm okay cool cool Okay, so missing words are you're acting. Like you're acting, you're being, you're doing. So when you say, um, uh, so like I'm not scared, like I'm not already scared, you would say. You're saying, I was already scared, like, you're making me more scared but it but the way that so the way that um so the way that the situation already was was scary enough and she's almost speaking to the situation the general situation and saying why are you giving me another challenge i was already challenged enough so it's like a correction to whoever you're speaking to you're saying i need you to know that i was already and then whatever follows next. And your acting is the one I'm not already. So um, you could say, uh, let's try, uh, like I didn't know. Can you see that on the screen if I, Ooh, it's gonna be close. Like I didn't know. It fits, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so same thing here. You'd say like, you'd say to somebody, oh, like I didn't know that. And the meaning is the opposite. I already, like I know that. When you say like I didn't know that, you're saying you're acting like I didn't know that. And you're correcting the person. You're saying you're acting like I didn't know that. And I need you to, to know that I did know that. So... Let's try to break this down into, into a more visual formula. And we will stick with this guy? Okay. Uh, and it's going to be like... Okay, and on this side is a sort of hidden but never said... Your acting I don't know why it makes such a huge dot you're acting okay fine like you're acting like X like something so you're acting like you're acting like I don't care so that's the main formula for the sentence but the additional part is down below and this never gets said but this is the the, the meaning you're acting like, uh, K. 
okay, wait, like not x. But x is true. Wow, this became very mathematical. But it's true, this is it. So you're acting like x isn't a thing, but it is a thing. And all of that, all of that, instead of saying all that, all we say is like, <laughs> which is really, really hard <laughs> as a non-native speaker. Um, you know, like English wasn't hard enough already. So you see what I did there? So I would say, like English isn't hard enough already. So I'm saying, you're acting. In this case, it's like me that's acting. I'm speaking to myself. Um, and, uh, well, maybe I'm speaking to the English language. Like, I'm, I'm chastising the English language, saying, like, like it wasn't hard enough already. So I'm saying to English, you're acting like English wasn't already hard. So in this case, like in a lot of other cases, I'm kind of giving English, the, the English language, like I'm treating it like it's alive, like it's another person and I'm talking to it. And I'm saying, you're acting like English isn't already hard. And I need you to know, dear English, that, that English is hard. So that's the, uh, but X is true down below. So you're acting like English isn't hard enough already, but it is hard enough already gets reduced to, like, English isn't hard enough already. Um, like I, like I, like I care. You know, you might hear someone say that. It's a little bit rude. Um, they're letting you know that, that whatever you've just told them hasn't affected them in any way. They don't have any feeling about what you've just told them. So if you were trying to say something to, to make a point to somebody, they might say, like I care, which is... Um, you're acting like I care, but I don't care. Yeah. This is it. This is the formula. This, this, is, this is screenshot worthy here. Um, I, think I'll make a, I think I'll make a real video out of this because it's good. Anytime we can break things into a formula, I hope you can agree. Uh, it's super helpful, I think, um, whenever studying a language. And obviously, like we can see on the screen here, at first it's, yeah, it's like a math formula. So it's not, uh, it doesn't seem like the most natural and most helpful way to learn, but I think it's an important first step. And then as you repeat the idea and you visit the idea again, then the idea of this framework, of this, of this, um, of this equation can sort of fall away as you start to remember um, what these different parts around, like the you're acting and the not X, but X is true, you start to remember that that's it. And then before you know it, you will be uh, talking just like a native. Um, just as I said that, I realized, you know, like a native has the same syntax, the same, uh, it's the same grammar. If you said like, like a native, um, if you said just like that, like a native, it doesn't have the same meaning as what we see on screen here because this requires some musicality to it. There has to be a certain um, pitch and uh, journey to the sentence. So um, you'll hear it in Chandler's speaking, and that's not just uh, Chandler. There's going to be um, some variation from human to human, but in general, let's try to map that. I think that could be a, that could be a lot of fun. Okay, like I, so let's start with the like again. Like I, like I, okay, let's try to draw the, the sort of, uh, the musical beats for this. I'm going to try this and I'm going to do, like I did it, did that, oh, like I didn't need that already. Like I didn't know. Yeah, I'm just figuring out the music for this. Because it is music. I mean, you know this probably already because you're here, you're studying advanced English. The, an important part of, of English is the music of the sentence. The highs and the lows and the swinging, the, the, the tempo rubato can be pretty important. Okay, so um, bear with me. We're going to try to make this musical. 
Um, so first off, I think there's going to be a crescendo. Woo, that's too thick. So there's a crescendo. Da 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 da. Like I, or like I wasn't dreading tomorrow enough. And then the pitch actually goes like, let's do pitch just like straight up black. I am pitch. Does that fit? We'll see in a second. Uh, and this is a volume. So this one's pretty sharp, actually. Um, the pitch sort of stays constant as you're setting most of the sentence, and then the last or the second to last uh, syllable, probably the last word and the strongest syllable in that last word is going to be where you have this really sudden, um, this really sudden jump. Let me move pitch so it's on screen here. <laughs> this is pitch. Pitch. Oh, like I wasn't dreading tomorrow enough. Ma. I think there's a little. We'll, we'll test this with other sentences too, but I think it's. You have a very quick, sharp ba. And then just for a second at the end, ma. Oh, like I didn't know that already. Oh, no. Is it different? Oh, like I didn't know that already. Yeah, da 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 da. Um, like, oh, like, oh, like you know what you're doing. Mmm, mmm, darn. The emphasis is different in different uh, in different uh, sentences. Oh, like you don't know what you're doing. That's a good question. Bear with me, it'll come to me. Oh, like he cares about your well being. Okay, T. Oh, like I wasn't dreading tomorrow enough. Oh, like he cared. Nah, he, ah, uh, he, ah. Uh. Sounds like it's around the same note, at least relative to the to the sort of wind up. Uh, da 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 da. Da. Oh, like, oh, like I didn't care. Oh, like I wasn't dreading tomorrow enough. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, like he's here. Ha, he, he, ha, he. It's around the same. Um, but unfortunately, the, the rise and the fall changes a little bit. What doesn't change is that you have this constant for a second, which sort of betrays the uh, syntax and the music of the sentence, if you would say it normally. So you'd say like, um, I wasn't dreading tomorrow enough. You would say that in a normal sentence, but in this case, you get rid of all that music before the emphasis, and you say, and you really do get stuck. Uh, I can't think of a particularly long one. Oh, like I wasn't going to catch the bus and then go downtown and actually see the play tomorrow without anyone to be with me. Um, he da, 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 da. That's a really long one, but um, believable enough-ish. <laughs> um, but that—that's exactly how I would say that. It has to keep that, has to keep that wind up, so that the more important thing, the sort of not X, gets emphasized. So the not X is the thing that has the highest pitch, right? You're acting like. Let's do black again for a second to denote the pitch. Um, oh, like you care. Da, 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 da. Oh, like he's going to come and see me. Something like that. Yeah. The, uh, the chat is just, uh, hopping. <laughs> Uh, I think that's all of the questions on the website for this week. 
Let me double check. Da, da, da. Make friends. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right. So, uh, any any other? Uh, I, I don't know who's watching. Two people are watching. Are there any questions? Frank Wonder. Put user in time. Curious. Huh. Right. What's our time on this? I am not used to this interface. Oh, it's been 30 minutes. Okay, I guess that's enough. <laughs> um, thanks very much for watching. I really, uh, really hope this is helpful for you. And if you have questions, uh, feel free to write um, by using the contact form on the website. Or again, if you search for something and it's not there, I'm watching <laughs> and I will answer that next, uh, next time around. Oh, thanks for the feedback. I appreciate that. Yay, yay, yay. All right, well, uh, have a good night or day, wherever you are. Uh, take care. Bye.